So the research that he actually became famous with is about 50, 40, 50 years ago. He did a lot of research into learned helplessness. And learned helplessness is a phenomenon where um, people and animals, they actually did it with dogs uh, in the beginning, if they're put into a helpless position long enough, they will learn to be helpless and they will stop trying to improve their situation. But one of the things that was kind of like annoying for researchers is that some people and some animals, it's almost impossible to get them learned helpless. Uh, it's actually a good trait probably, but as a researcher it's kind of annoying because, you know, your data doesn't match up. Uh, but luckily it was statistically insignificant, so he could happily go on and do his studies. But later on he kept thinking like, how does that work? Like what's the difference between people who are immune to learned helplessness and people who are maybe even more sensitive to it? And that's when he came, for instance, with the differentiator between learned optimists and learned pessimists. A learned optimist, somebody who tends to look at things that are positive and attribute it to himself and thinks, whoa, positive stuff is happening to me often. And when things go wrong, things like, well, probably it won't be that bad. It makes it smaller. They tend to be pretty um, immune to learned helplessness. And if you do the, other, the opposite, so you're a learned pessimist, if something bad happens, you make it really big and you make it like this is going to be forever. And when something goes right, you're like, well, I'm, I'm lucky for a little bit, a small area, and you make it really small, then, then you're really vulnerable for learned helplessness. So that's one of the first researches he did.